Good afternoon. I am Mr. Ish. Let's continue here with this topic on the area of a surface of a revolutionary or a rotational solid. The first question here, y equals x 0 to 1 in terms of the x intervals. And then we are rotating here that curve around the y-axis. Remember, we're not doing volume determinations here. We're doing surface area determination. Y equals X is the same thing as X equals Y because we have everything here with regards to the Y axis. We need to look accordingly. Our intervals here again will be zero to one. If you're looking at the X direction or the Y direction, the intervals are the same. You're looking at Y equals X equals Y is that type of a line from zero up to one. If you were to rotate around the Y axis, you develop a solid which looks like that. But you know, with regards to the surface area, you're only looking at the outside area. You're not looking at the inner space at all because that's a volume. With rotation here along a vertical line, our formula is this. You know you have a two pi pushed outside. You're looking from a lower limit, upper limit. You're looking at something here with regards to X, X equals equation. Then you're looking at one plus DX over DY whole square and dy that's what you're looking at if x is equal to y the derivative of this d over dx is going to yield you a dx over dy is equal to a one the derivative of y will be a one and you'll see that to come into play dx or dy is equal to one everything falls into place over here the surface area of this solid you'll have two pi zero to one the x equation here is really a y you have a one plus your dx or dy I showed you was equal to 1. 1 squared is just a 1. Bring everything into a better form. You're looking here at a 2 in a root and dy. This root 2 can come and attach outside as a coefficient. You're looking at a 2 root 2 pi 0 to 1 y dy. When you're doing the integral or the antiderivative of y, you're generating a y square over 2. You have a 2 root 2 pi and then you have a y square and I'm bringing an over 2 over here and then from a 1 and a 0. These 2's can cancel out. 1 coming in, 0 coming in, the difference of the 2 is just a 1. You end up having here a surface area of just a root 2 pi and that right there would be your answer root 2 pi unit squared this solid rotational solid would have a surface area of a root 2 pi and we can leave the answer as that let's look at the second example with a very interesting result x equals r y equals h let's graph them out x equals r imagine it's right over here vertical line x equals r going right here to r comma zero y equals h imagine it's right here you have y equals h my y intercept is zero comma h you see that and then we're rotating this around the y-axis right over there. You know the equation over here in terms of the surface area. You have a 2 pi. You have a lower limit, upper limit. What can be the lower limit? Well, we can assume the lower limit here is a 0. The origin, y value of the origin. And then the upper limit can be here. The y value here of this y-intercept, h. You're looking here at equation in the x format. And then you will be looking at 1 plus dx over dy whole square and dy what is our equation here x it's right here x is equal to r suddenly your integral becomes that i could have pushed the 2 pi out i can do that you have an r over here because x is equal to r if x is equal to r let's do the derivative of this you'll have a dx over dy is equal to the derivative of this is a zero you have a 1 plus 0 square, no need to even write it, you just end up having nothing more than a 1. That's it. And then we bring a dy. Root 1, 1 goes away. You have a 2 pi, 0 h r dy. Now, bring the r outside, because it could have brought outside as a coefficient or a constant, 0 h dy. Bring in the antiderivative, 2 pi r, you have a y, upper limit h and a 0. Bring the definite intervals into play 2 pi r h that's the surface area of this but what exactly is this it's nothing more than what would appear to be a cylinder except you're only looking at the lateral surface of the cylinder you're not looking at the top we're not looking at the bottom we're only looking here at the lateral surface all around the lateral surface 2 pi r h if you were looking here at the bottom and you were looking here at the top you would have this come into play and then you would really have a surface area of a cylinder 
but here we're looking at the surface area of only the cylindrical portion or the lateral surface of that cylinder without looking at the upper and the lower circles. And that right there is the end result, 2 pi r h. Our last question is this, we have this function y or f of x is equal to square root of r square minus x square. If you push the square root on the other side and push the x square on the other side, you're looking at x square plus y square is equal to r square no longer the equation of a function but the upper equation here is a function if you were to graph this out you're looking basically at a semicircle and you know you'd have a radius of r therefore you're looking at intervals minus r to r but you know you're looking at it in terms of rotation on the x-axis therefore what does that mean what are you really looking at you're looking here basically at what will end up being a sphere and that's exactly what you're looking at but of course we're looking here at surface area of a sphere We'll play this out and it'll give us the formula for the surface area. Many of you have seen it, but we're bringing it in here because it falls very well into this topic. Remember, R could have been any number over here in terms of an actual radius, and you just have to plug it in and you'd have the surface area for that specific sphere with a certain dimension. We now know that our intervals along the x-axis are minus R to R. We know this right here is our equation, y is equal to square root of R square minus x square. But if you were to differentiate this, Implicitly, you have 2x plus 2y dy over dx is equal to 0 and then dy over dx is equal to minus x over y because you take things across, they cancel out and you can resubstitute the y from right here. You have this r square minus x square and that right there is the essential component of this equation which you'll see 2 pi you have a minus r to r, then you have your y equation here. Your y equation is this, r square minus x square. Then you have your other component, 1 plus dy over dx whole square, which will be a minus x over r square minus x square, and then you have that square and dx. That right there is our equation form, and you know it, you've seen it. Everything coming here off a unit circle, which was then adjusted in terms of y, to generate a function. Take that equation and bring in the even function property of an integral. You're looking at a four pi and then you're here from a zero to r. That's a very good technique over here. r square minus x square. You can open up all of this. You'll have a one plus x square over r square minus x square dx. You can simplify this and we'll simplify it right over here. Common denominator is r square minus x square. You'll have r square minus x square plus x square all over r square minus x square, these cancel out. You'll have an r square over r square minus x square all within a single root, and you'll really have this. r divided by square root of r square minus x square. So we can simplify all of this, bring this exact expression right over here, and let's do it. And I'm gonna bring it in right over here. When I bring it in, I have coming here in the numerator an r, but in the denominator, I'm seeing this r square minus x square. Now, the interesting aspect of this is everything simplifies very well. It cancels out. You have this only remaining, 0 r and r dx. I could have pushed the r out. You would have a 4 pi r and then a 0 r dx. You can bring in your antiderivative. You have a 4 pi r, your antiderivative is an x from an upper r and a 0. The difference of the two intervals, you'll have a 4 pi r square. And that right there would be the surface area of a sphere and you've seen it. And I presented a video on this before except we went slightly a tad bit different route. But here you've seen this. We've brought this into play utilizing the area of a surface of a revolution, a curve that was rotated around the x-axis and the resulting surface area was calculated in terms of its formula, which if you really knew an R value would give you a quantity, an actual quantity. So there it is, 4 pi R square is equal to the surface area of this specific sphere you have with the radius R. And that right there, it brings us to the conclusion of this video. Remember the differences here you have in this specific instance, a rotation on the X axis. So everything here is with DX with intervals along the X direction. With the previous two examples, you had integration with respect to dy, but the rotation was around the y-axis and the intervals were along the y-axis as well. And that's about all I wanted to present in this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.